Ladies and gentlemen, TechSource here and today we are going to build a monster gaming PC with all these parts that you see here. We are going to unbox each one so let's get started. Alright, first off the bat we got our motherboard from ASUS, we got our tower from Fractal Design, we got our Vengeance RAM sticks, a hard drive, an HADI CPU cooler, a Windows 7 operating system and moving on to the other side we have our Intel CPU, we have our ASUS CD drive, two SSDs from Samsung and HX850 power supply, GeForce GTX 780 graphics card and two silent fans. So this is my tower, the Define R4 by Fractal Design and I chose this because of its small size and because it is a tower specifically used for a silent PC build. The R4 comes pre-fitted with dense noise absorbing material on the front, top and side panels to absorb noise and also features a module vent panel which prevents noise from escaping unused fan vents when silence is required. You can add an additional fan on the front here if you require more cooling and it even comes in an integrated fan controller that's easily accessible and allows you to manage up to 3 fans of your choosing. You got your power button, USB ports and your media jacks on top of the tower making it very simple to access along with two vents near the back if you decide to add fans for more cooling. On the right side of the case you can see that the wire management is super clean and inside the tower you will find the box with all necessary screws needed for the installation. Let's move on to the other side so we can take a look inside the chassis even though it looks like a small tower it will fit all the parts that you saw earlier with still room to spare. The driver cages are also removable if more spaces are needed in the future as well. I prefer a more smaller case simply because it's easier to carry and it takes up a lot less space than a full tower. The back of the case is pretty standard, the power supply spot is located on the bottom and you have 7 rows of space in case you want to add multiple graphics cards or other parts. On the bottom of the case you have 4 rubber legs and a removable tray to make cleaning a lot easier. Moving on to the motherboard, I went with the ASUS' newest model, the X79 Deluxe motherboard because it offers dual intelligent processors with 4-way optimization. You can safely overclock your processors with a click of a button using their software. It also offers top up performance, efficiency, digital power, system cooling and it comes with a built in Wi-Fi network and USB 3.0 ports. Inside the box you have the standard parts. I really like how the IO shield has a soft cushion on the inside so it does not scratch the motherboard by accident. You also have your manual, driver CD, a bunch of optional cables and this is the device you need to connect to the internet wirelessly. This motherboard also has 8 memory slots, 3 PCI slots and also a much friendlier and more intuitive BIOS which allows you to use your mouse making it really easy and convenient to navigate. Moving on to the processor, I've been an AMD guy for the longest time because it's more affordable than Intel but I was never satisfied with it playing games or even editing so I decided to try something new and go with the Intel Core i7. I went with this specific model because not only it has amazing reviews, it also has 6 cores with 3.2GHz stock which can be easily overclocked to 4.5GHz with stable use and it's a huge benefit for multitasking, video editing and especially gaming. It's a no brainer that you have to have at least one SSD in your computer for faster reading and writing speeds. I love loading games faster than everyone else, opening up large programs quickly and even booting up my PC in less than 10 seconds from just one SSD so I decided to make it even faster by adding one more. Moving right along, these were optional fans that I brought for my build because the ones that come with the tower are not as quiet as I want. If you guys want the best, most silent and ugliest fans, the Noctua is the way to go. The reviews for these fans are insane and they offer the quietest fans in the market. I'm not really sure who designed this with the most hideous color choices but aside from the color combinations, these fans are worth every penny. When you do purchase these fans, they do come with optional rubber screws that you can use in place of the steel screws and they are used to prevent the fans from vibrating and they do come with a bunch of extensions in case the stock cables are too short. So there's nothing fancy here, I went with 32GB of RAM from Corsair Vengeance with 8GB and a speed of 1866MHz each that makes editing videos and using programs that use a lot of memory much faster. I personally think 32 was an overkill but I got it anyways because extra space is always great to have. For the video card I went with an EVGA GeForce GTX 780 simply because it has Titan performance at a lower cost and has 3GB of memory with a memory interface of 384 bits. Also the maximum resolution it can support is 4096 by 2160 which is insane seeing as a 36 inch monitor with that resolution goes for around $36,000.
It also has 2304 CUDA cores with a base clock of 967 megahertz. It weighs 3 pounds and its length is 12.88 inches and like most graphics cards it does have both DVI ports, an HDMI port along with a display port on its side. This is definitely one of the best video cards you can currently buy. You gotta have a CPU cooler especially if you're going with a silent PC build in a small tower. The HADI comes with two stock fans but I prefer using the silent ones that I purchased. It also comes with three metal housing brackets that are specific to the type of processor you have and it's used to mount the end of the CPU cooler to the CPU. This also connects to a USB on the motherboard which in return allows you to monitor the temperature and change the performance via software to meet your needs. A CPU cooler is not only used to cool the CPU and prevent it from overheating but it's also used to improve its performance. I went with an HX 850 power supply which was way more than I needed. I got it simply to prepare for possible future upgrades and because it has a silent cooling fan. The 850 is 80 plus gold certified which means it provides high power efficiency of at least 87% at any load between 20 and 100% saving your money on your electrical bill, reducing heat in your computer and prolonging its life. This power supply also has quiet operation at low loads. Most power supplies have fans that spin regardless if you're playing games or surfing the web, but the HX series power supplies generate less heat so they require less cooling and the thermally controlled fan only spins when it's needed. I had to go with Windows 7 because Windows 8 sucks. I accidentally bought the Home Premium instead of the Professional which is needed to support my 32GB of RAM. Home Premium only supports up to 16 gigs. I went with a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Black hard drive because I didn't want to stuff my SSDs with useless files cramming up its space. So a hard drive on the side is perfect for storing documents, movies and music. And last but not least I had to get a CD drive because I needed it to install Windows. This is a basic Asus 24X DVD optical drive. So that's all the parts for my monster gaming PC build. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did please leave a like. I will upload the final product in a few days and show it off to you guys. Let me know what you guys think about these parts in the comment section down below. Is there something you guys think I should have added to the build or changed? Leave a comment down below and I'll respond back. We have a few giveaways coming up soon so make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss out. This is the Tech Source and we'll see you next time.